We want to welcome the former governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Peter Ayodele Fire to the conversation. Your Excellency, thank you for joining us uh, on this uh, episode of the uh, broadcast. First and foremost, let's uh, find out, are you looking forward to the inauguration and uh, what's, uh, the, a lot has happened since the last time you came? What's the preparation you are also looking forward to as well as how would you rate the preparation towards the inauguration of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinumbu? Well, um, let me call it out Nigerians again and appreciate them for listening most of the times when we come as leaders to share our views. Well, on the inauguration, uh, I think it's a uh, set day. Despite the threat there and there, it's a set day. And uh, it's, it's my belief that all will go well. We can't all be in Abuja. Because uh, it, it's celebration everywhere you are. For a new, a new day, it will be a new day in Nigeria, a new government, a new hope, hope renewed for everybody in Nigeria, as it were, because there will be some not happy with the inauguration, it's understandable. And the uh, majority will have their way, minority will have their say. So for me, it's a day for Nigeria to look forward to. I fully appreciate all the security agencies for their stand. The the DSS, the, the police for their stand. I want to appreciate them for standing very strong, very very strong, uh, on behalf of the country. And uh, it is going to be a moment we we'll all remember Nigeria and remember the leadership of our country and the role everyone played. We can't all be in Abuja. Whenever we are, whenever you are, to celebrate Nigeria on the 29th of May. Mm. That's a great one, Your Excellency. Well, was there any time you had doubt, especially with the barrage of litigations going in the courts, that perhaps uh, the inauguration may be suspended or not old? Were, were, were there doubts in your mind? Or you were confident that once the election was announced, the results were announced, we will we'll move to this level? Let me tell you again that from day one, that Ashwa Jibola and Med had won this election. I have looked out in my mind that all threat to the swearing in will be an empty threat in the long run. And we can effectively say that it has never happened in our country that there will be a president elect not sworn in. It is constitutional provision for you to vent your anger, your feelings in the law court. And that, as that table, that, that has been provided for everybody. They've all filed their papers. And that does not take away the fact that whatever happens there and then will not be implemented. But it's equally bad and not fair enough for our country for people to continue to indict the judiciary. You know, when, when I see most of these things, I ask questions. When it does not go your way, then it, it will be a bad judgment. When it does not represent what you want, it will be, it will be a bad judgment, it will be a bad perception. I was reading and I was speaking to a friend who said that everybody is looking up to the judiciary tomorrow and that everybody has an expectation. Yes, that, that we have expectation. The expectation doesn't have to be my way. It doesn't have to be your way. You must not throw the judiciary in this kind of a situation. If you don't believe in the judiciary, don't find papers before them. Don't take your case before them. The elections are come and gone. The winner has been declared rightly or wrongly. And there is the position we all have to follow. So let me tell you clearly that I, I, I have no doubt for one second that anything will go wrong. But for me, security is equally important. Mm. So I support all steps taken to ensure that the president-elect takes out of office and he assumes office promptly. All right, Your Excellency, let's uh, leave uh, the incoming administration for a bit and focus uh, on uh, the Buhari administration. It's been eight years and uh, we're looking at the end of an era. How would you rate the Buhari administration in your own way? Well, um, I wish this question 
was never asked of me. I wish. Because I was the lone voice, one of the, but I was the lone voice of voice in 2015, who stepped to Nigeria that we should not expect anything good from the Boaris administration. I was pounding it front and back. I was into it in 2015, 2016, 2017. And this cost me succession in my state. That is not for today. But I told Nigeria, Wari would leave this country worse than you know. Go to all I said on the, on the internet in 2015, before the coming of President Wari. I told you that ever since I grew up in this country, even before, before becoming somebody or, or, or a governor in this country, I, Mr. President Buhari has not led a government that is, in, is ever in charge. Other hand takes over the government and they do whatever they like. Look at a president that promised security. Look at a president that promised as good as saying dollar would be one to one to deny her. Look at a president that promised all you can think of. The economy is in shambles at the departure. You can imagine a president going tomorrow, still asking for me to borrow, to do what? I have looked back. I can clearly see it here. Without a policy, that President Doris years, eight years, is a disaster. A disaster for a long time to come. Many years to come. You see? For those of us here now, and people in the age 20, age 30, like us now, over 60 years, the consequences of this administration, especially people of this administration, will take its turn in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And children yet are born will pay dearly for this administration negatively. <laughs> you know, you are all telling us uh, something trillion, on debt, borrowing and borrowing, but let me tell you that some things that Nigerians don't even know. There are some borrowings from China, particularly. The borrowings were the, the, the loans were given to Nigeria, and they will start the payment will start in some 20 years' time, some will start in 30 years' time, some will start in 40 years' time. Those ones are not on the front burners now. Because the children here from born come and pay those 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 debts. That is why China takes over so many projects in the African countries. They can come tomorrow and say, "Well, we want to take over the airport. We want to take over the rail system, and so on." Because the loans for most of these projects are loans that are so long time that you will feel all is normal today. We have, personally, as I of I have no kind words for President Wari. I have no kind kind word. It's just for him to go. He's done so much damage. And one funny thing, when he talks, I become so worried. You see, when a president that has done this much of damage pretends as if nothing has happened, the president coming to say that Nigerians appreciate you closing the border for almost three years. Four oh, years, and they appreciate you, and they will remember your administration. Yes, we will remember him, but in the negative. What do we say about the lives that have been lost? Over 70,000 lives lost in Nigeria. The Middle Belt will never forget him. The, the, the Northeast will never forget President Buhari. Majority of the president, people praising President Buhari today or saying things about President Buhari in this 11th hour. I think it just for him to be eased out of office. <laughs> it's sad, it's disturbing, it's unfortunate. I read, I read uh, saying today in the, news, in the news that they should prevail, they should prevail on the National Assembly not to approve borrowing. In fact, more interestingly, a president that was supposed to dissolve cabinet, refused to dissolve cabinet, which means they're waiting to spend the money they want to take approval for in the last minute. So it's unfortunate, it's regrettable. I am not surprised. 
I'm only vindicated. I'm not surprised okay. at all. Okay. So well, let me leave it like that for now. Your Excellency will, will, will uh, continue from there um, some other time because apparently we do not have uh, so much time. Uh, what is your relationship with the president elect? There are those who said that you must have worked for the president elect um, in the kitty, despite being in the PDP. They are saying that the president elect swept the kitty because people like you, who are in rival parties, work for him. What is the correct situation? See, I've said it. At this age, I have no reason to lie. I worked for the I joined the others who believe that it should be a southern presidency. I never hid this. I said this separately before the election. I said it during the election. My association with the G5 was not hidden. I am not among those that will come out, come, come and tell another story and try to hide. I am not hiding. There, there are certain things that are beyond political interest. There are beyond. Have you never? Have you not seen somebody who came out and said the truth and give a testimony against his his his, his own wife, his own children, his own his own friend, and so on? Because it, it becomes necessary to do the right thing at a given time. What I'm trying to say is that in times like this, the country is bigger than our political party. As 63, I am a leader in this country by God's grace. And I'm not going to sit back, have a belief, and go and be hiding because I'm a member of the PDP. For that and for this, elections have come and gone. And what is important is that we have a southern president in place. You are a bad but in the maximum eight years, how are we going to keep the north? You will keep Nigeria together. You will keep us well knitted together. I, I don't believe that another state should finish it, succeeded by it. No, no, no. no I don't. I don't share that. No uh, Peter will be, and uh, Atiku are in court against uh, Ashwajibola and Metinubu. They are confident that um, the court will pronounced that one of them was the winner of the election. What, what is your own reading of what's going on? You see, let me, let me get this. My, 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 my position in the last, um, sorry, my last uh, interaction with, with your station. Let me now make it uh, clear. You see, I said it very clearly at the time. Our, our, in 2019, Peter Obi was in PDP, Konkosu was in PDP, Atiku was in PDP, G5 in PDP. I said it clearly that the four supposed PDP members or PDP leaders in 2019 gave the election to Ashwa Jibala and Atiku because we were badly broken. That remains a statement of fact. I can't shy away from that. Well, let, let's put it this way. They're in court. Yeah. I just want them to allow the, the, the process to take its course. If they give this election to Ubi, we have no power. If they give the outcome to Ashwa, we have no power. But if they say Ashwa, you must continue. They must all respect that too. Because the, the noise is more than the reality, the way we are going about it. We are only hitting the party. Some people say there, there is no celebration in the country. Who tells you that I don't say Who tells you? When it's not our way, the whole roof must not come down. For me, it is the time for us as PDP to pick the pieces while we are waiting for the outcome of the board, to pick the pieces and put it together. See how we can come back as a party because we have a role as a position party. If the court says, yes, it's not, it's actually. If the court says it's PDP, okay, you go to the villa. But if it says it's not you, if it's not our party, then we have to pick the pieces. And you will see that from time now, I've stopped criticizing the PDP. And the reason is that there's the time for war. The time to put these things together. That takes me to the future of the PDP. What is the future of the PDP like?
uh, Governor Wike says that he wants to join others in reclaiming the party. Do you see this happening? Do you think Governor Wike will end up in the APC? Or, or are you also planning to end up in the APC? And let me tell you, let me answer Governor Wike's point first. Wike that I know wanted in Nigeria for all of us. In Nigeria, that is equitable, fair to all concerned. That is the Wike, the Martinez, the people in the G5. And that's what I, I, I believe that we're doing. And there should be a southern president. This has happened. And I don't think there's anybody who's ready to pull the rules anymore. The, 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 the time is far gone for people like me to jump from UDP to APC. I will never. I your fire sheet. I don't know any other fire sheet, but this I your fire sheet will never become to APC. It's too late. But what, what do I want to become? When I show you will finish, even if I want to be president, it will be too late. I'll be 70 or 71. So there's no business. And the wiki I know, he has not sounded it. And he has not told me. And I don't think wiki will be a man jumping from one place to the other. He was he wanted in his belief a southern presidency, which has already happened. And we must all equally join hand to make the government a success. As sure as you are made, Balatinu will not be president of APC. I am very sure he will not be president of APC. He will be president and commander in chief of Nigeria. President of Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigerians. Yes, he has a political party, but he is a father figure. He's not going to be able to behave like President Buhari who said, those who gave me 95% will get something better than those who got 1%. That is not the spirit. The spirit is for an Ashwagu. Who is, the, who is the father of the nation? I was excited when I saw one person stood there. I was there myself. A lot of other people We shows a man who wants to do an all inclusive leadership, an all inclusive presidency. And further, furthermore, a man who wants to heal Nigeria. Under President Buhari, we are badly divided. We are badly divided. We, 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 we don't trust each other anymore. I assure you that I see will bring us together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, mm -hmm. you, are, you are from Ekiti State. We have um, an APC governor there. What is your relationship with uh, Governor Biodun Abayomi Oyebanji? And the second leg is because I don't, I mean, we don't really have time. What are your expectations of an Ashwagyu presidency for Nigeria? So, two questions now, sir. Now, let me quickly say that uh, with the governor of it, the sitting governor of it, like I will say to you again, elections have come and gone. Governor Uyebanji is in leadership position for our state. He remains my governor. He deserves my support. My, I attended his inauguration ceremony. And for every event he invites me, as he said, I will be there. And let me tell you, so far, so good. The gentleman is doing well. Oyebanji, governor of the state, is doing very, very well. He's been able to reach out to me several years. He's been to Governor Shegoni. He's uh, allies. He has a relationship with, his, uh, with Governor Oni, uh, Governor Faemi, and Governor Adebayo. What else could we do? He's gone to more, almost all the leaders in the state. In leadership today, Oyebanji is doing well. That does not say that when it is time to tell him that his APC and PDP, we will do that. But above all, my politics in it now is, is I'm going to take a back seat, allow all the young people, the people who need to put energy back in the party to do what they have to do. Give them the necessary support. Uh, one of my guys, one of my boys, uh, Dr. Motosho, sent me a text of his intention to go around and start the leader. Let him start the good works. Let all of them start the good works. Make it all inclusive. If you don't make it inclusive, you will never win an election in it. Mm. So let all of them come together. You understand? Leave me out of it. Where they need my advice, I will give it to them. I will support them. 
But let them make sure they forgive each other. They do all they need to do to ensure that a party called PDP comes back together. We had had our issues. We are four. We are no more in election mode. We should work out. Same thing is the PDP National. PDP National should please. I, was, I said I stopped criticizing them. I had uh, one of the officers of a party saying, oh, she is uh, finished in PDP. Uh, that is a small mind talking. Such a person is a small mind. <laughs> what would I want to do again? I was a two time governor. God gave me opportunities in the party. Even because you are now a national officer of the party, you will now start to run your mouth. That is taking too far. For me, I will continue to support the party okay. and make sure that the PDP, as long as they want to rally everybody, they will have the party. Your expectations. Stand as an opposition party. Your Excellency, sir. Move the party, move the party forward. Yes. Yeah. Your, expect, your expectations of, of the Tinumbu uh, presidency. Mm. And, and right. In 30 like seconds, sir. Yes. I, I want to say that uh, I feel sad that the outgoing government cannot resolve of this subsidy, well subsidy. At least take a position on it. But for, for this administration coming, it's an uphill task. It's not going to be a tea party. I would expect this. I have no doubt that this governor, this president, will do well. But I want Nigerians to remember that it's not going to be easy. It will take five key decisions that will hurt us. But in the end, we will have reasons to, to say things have gotten better. One, the first subsidy must go. Mm. He can't shy away from it. He's said it already. That is going to take. Is going to end the regime of subsidy. So, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, remember that you gave us that promise. Okay. End this regime. Only a few people are benefiting from it. Let Nigeria move forward. I will wish you the best, and we are going to support you. That's a good way to wrap it up, uh, Dr. Peter Yodele Fayoshe, former governor of Ekiti State. We must have a two-term governor of uh, Ekiti State. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us on Journalist Hangout. Thank you very much.